Once in a while, scientists discover something really incredible about our own galaxy, something that helps us understand how things here operate and how things move around. And sometimes these new discoveries help us answer questions that we couldn't really answer before. Hello wonderful person, today we're going to be talking about one such discovery. A discovery that connects one of the features in our galaxies with one of the mysterious stellar streams that has been traveling around the galaxy in the last few billion years. The stream known as the Hercules stream. And what this discovery potentially suggests is that something mysterious, very likely dark matter, which we don't really understand very well just yet, is causing the galaxy to slow down over time and is also causing some of the stars to leave to the outskirts. Which is actually something that a lot of different theories predicted before, but has never really been proved observationally. And so now we have this proof. But first of all, well, let's start in the middle of our own galaxy. If we look at the Milky Way from, I guess, the top in this case, we would actually discover a shape known as the bar, specifically a galactic bar. It's not very easy to see at first, and it's also very difficult to see in all galaxies, but it very likely looks something like this from the top. We are located somewhere right here, and the bar itself is sort of going across this way. And it also connects to the two major arms of our galaxy. Now this is of course a pure speculation at the moment because we can't really see the galaxy from the top, but it's based on the investigations of star motion and also is based on pictures of other similar spiral galaxies we have from the outside. For example, this is NGC 1300 with an extremely beautiful galactic bar you can see right here. And there are quite a lot of other examples, such as NGC 4921, NGC 1073, or this right here, NGC 1365. As a matter of fact, about two-thirds of all spiral galaxies seem to have these bars, and the scientists have even established that it's a feature that seems to appear in older, more established galaxies. And so, for example, when the scientists look at some of the ancient galaxies in distant universe, only about 20% of all of them will contain bars. But when we look at more recent times, about 65% of galaxies contain them. It implies that these uh, features established over time. Also, many of these galaxies, such as M83 right here, will also often contain a very active galactic nucleus in the middle. Or basically, they'll have an active black hole producing a lot of radiation and a lot of emissions at all times. Which also, of course, implies that the Milky Way galaxy was such a galaxy in the past. We do have signs of this all over the place. These features also usually act as a kind of a stellar nursery, producing a lot of new stars, which then sort of travel across the galaxy and spread pretty much all over the place as well. But the actual formation process of these bars is not entirely well understood. It's something to do with the density wave coming from the center, but is still being debated even today. What's not being debated is the fact that these galactic bars play a really large role in, well, basically controlling the motions of things in the galaxy. Because this represents such a huge massive object, it will usually affect a lot of motion of stars and a lot of interstellar gas that orbits around the galaxy. And many of these stars, especially the ones right here, will often become basically locked to this bar, or essentially become gravitationally linked to it in a very similar manner to how Jupiter that you see right here will actually lock some of the asteroids gravitationally, creating what's known as centaurs. And so generally speaking, we expect a lot of stars to form a kind of a bar and to kind of spin in such a way that the bar will maintain its shape over time, billions of years actually. But all of these gravitationally linked stars, or the stars in resonance with this bar, will also start experiencing any kind of effect that the bar experiences. So, for example, if suddenly this bar starts to slow down and to basically start moving a little bit slower, the resonance from the bar itself will obviously start affecting the stars as well. Another way of looking at this is to once again take a look at the Trojans of Jupiter. So, if suddenly I were to take Jupiter and to slowly start decreasing its speed, which will take its orbit farther and farther away from the Sun, because now it's moving a little bit slower, Eventually, all of these Trojans that were connected to Jupiter will also, because of the resonance, start moving to the outskirts of the solar system and assume new resonance there. Meaning that if the central bar starts slowing down, the stars that were connected to it through resonance will also start moving to the outskirts of the galaxy. At least that's what a lot of theories have predicted in the past. But how can we possibly prove this and is there any actual evidence out there? Well, one way to prove this is to find stars that did come from the inner regions of the galaxy 
and that are maybe connected through resonance to the galactic bar. And it looks like we might have actually found them. So first of all, there are a lot of these galactic streams around the Milky Way galaxy. This image here sort of illustrates some of them. Now, most of them are produced through, well, basically leftovers from galactic collisions. Some of them are produced in other ways. Some of them are still mysterious. But at least one of them, called Hercules Stream, involves a bunch of stars moving across the galaxy not so far away from us, but with a relatively similar speed to each other, however, a speed that's different from everything else around them. All of these stars in a Hercules stream are moving about 40 kilometers per second slower than the stars near them. Okay, so for example, if we look at this picture and we look at our own sun, we know that the sun is moving around the galaxy at a relative speed of about 230 kilometers per second. But these stars in the Hercules stream are moving slower. So here, I guess it would be about 190 kilometers per second. And for the most part, they all sort of connected to one another. But it just so happens that the scientists behind the recent paper discovered that they're also connected to something else. And you probably guessed what it is. They're all connected to the central galactic bar of the Milky Way galaxy. They're basically moving in resonance with the galactic bar. Which kind of implies that they probably came from the galactic bar a long time ago. But that's just the first piece of evidence. The scientists then also compared the metallicity of these stars, or basically how much of various materials they have on the inside, with the overall metallicity of other stars in the center of the galaxy compared to the stars near us. Now, generally, when it comes to metallicity, in some of the past studies, the scientists have discovered that there is actually a kind of a gradient in a typical galaxy, including, of course, the Milky Way. And so, generally speaking, as you move away from the center of the galaxy, the average metallicity of the stars will decrease. Whereas, if you move within the approximately 10 to 15,000 light years away from the center, the metallicity there will start increasing. And the closer to the center you get, the more metallicity we can sort of expect. With some obvious exceptions, including things like, for example, global clusters, which will usually have low metallicity. But the general idea here is that by looking at the average metallicity of stars in, for example, a typical cluster, or in this case, a galactic stream, such as the Hercules stream, we can then sort of figure out what part of the galaxy this stream or these stars might have come from. For example, if we find a star that's very similar in metallicity to our sun, it probably came from the region around here, about 25,000 light years away from the center of the galaxy. If we find something much lower in metallicity, it probably came from slightly farther away. If it's something higher in metallicity, it probably came from a little bit closer to the center. Well, it turns out that the metallicity of the stars in the Hercules stream do suggest that they actually came from much, much deeper inside the galaxy. Or in other words, that they actually traveled to the outskirts. And so the motion of the stars from inside the galaxy to the outside, plus the fact that they're connected gravitationally through resonance, with the galactic bar, both of these facts do suggest that, well, the galactic bar very likely slowed down over time. As a matter of fact, the calculations suggest that it slowed down by about 24% since the original creation, which also means that the galaxy sort of slowed down its rotation as well. It spins about 24 times slower now than it used to spin in the beginning. And theoretically speaking, there is really only one explanation to how this is possible. It's only possible if our galaxy is literally inside some sort of large galactic halo of dark matter. Something very massive, something very invisible, something that makes our galaxy slowly slow down. Basically slowly slowing things down as the things spin inside of it. And unfortunately, that's not really good news for alternative theories. If this is true, if the galaxy indeed slowed down, there is really no other explanation available to us. No other theory provides enough answers to show us how a galaxy can slow down so quickly over time. But the theories invoking dark matter explaining the universe explain all of this really well. As a matter of fact, they provide a very direct evidence that something is definitely slowing down the galaxy, and that something is massive enough to also explain a lot of other observations. That massive thing? phenomenon, whatever you want to call it, is dark matter. Although nobody still knows what exactly it is, we just seem to be observing the effects, not really the actual, I guess, particle or whatever it is responsible for the effects. Which is why I generally prefer to call this anomalous mass phenomenon. It's some sort of a mass, it's some sort of anomaly, and it's a thing, it's an event, it's a phenomenon, but possibly not a particle. But still, a really cool study, amazing evidence, and most importantly, 
provides a lot of evidence for a lot of mysteries, including the mysteries of the Hercules stream, and helps us understand how the actual galactic bars transform over time. Although naturally, a study like this will probably also create some questions, and that means that we're going to be talking about this in some of the future videos as well. For now, check out the study and all of the relevant links in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.